Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, June 25th, 2024 edition of the Sands and at Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. One of the things that always kind of shows up in our honeypots is uh, scanners that are looking for configuration files. Now, typically things like .env for environment variables, sometimes uh, cloud-specific configuration files, like configuration files that are often found on AWS hosted websites and the like. Now, what I saw new today is that the systems that are scanning for these configuration files started adding some Java, in particular, some Java Spring specific configuration files. These YAML files are not typically exposed to the public and never should be exposed to the public, but looks like some of these uh, individuals or groups that are scanning and searching for these configuration files figured out it may be worthwhile adding them to their list. I linked in the write-up that I did today about this to a list of URLs that we're seeing one particular actor use a lot. It's over a hundred different URLs. This is something that you may want to add to a vulnerability scanner that scans your own web applications, just to double check that you're not exposing any of these files to the public. These uh, spring specific configuration files, they often include things like server names and the like for different environments, like for dev versus production, but they may also include, for example, usernames and passwords. Not necessarily the greatest place to put usernames and passwords, but uh, if you protect these files well, it's certainly something that can be done. One of the issues with last week's monthly Microsoft Patch Tuesday updates was problems with SQL Server 2022. Apparently, in particular, cloud-based SQL servers were affected and you would see sort of a recovering pending state. This weekend, Microsoft did release an emergency update that should fix these issues. So if you ran into a problem, run this latest update from Microsoft. No need to apply this update if everything is running fine and you already applied the last month's patch from Microsoft. And Juniper released a large update for Juniper Secure Analytics. It brings the version up to 7.5.0 UP8 IF03. This this update resolves uh, more than 200 actually uh, different uh, vulnerabilities. A couple of them with a CVSS score of 9.8. They're essentially integer buffer overflows as well as some use after free vulnerabilities that may be able to be exploited for arbitrary code execution. Some of these vulnerabilities are actually quite old. Uh, for example, there is CVE 2019-13-22-4. This is a vulnerability in Onigorama that is a regular expression uh, library. And yes, as the CVE number applies, this particular vulnerability was uh, released or was discovered in 2019, actually uh, July 10th, 2019. So just about, uh, what is it now, uh, five years old. And for all the Apple product users out here, there is an interesting write-up and also a proof of concept available now for a vulnerability that was patched in May or June, depending on the product you're using. It's a buffer overflow in the XNU kernel in SP Concat mbuffs. The XNU kernel is the common kernel that uh, really com- is run on all Apple products, including the latest uh, Vision OS uh, that's used for the uh, Vision Pro uh, virtual reality uh, device. So if you are, for example, developing exploits, uh, this is also a great write-up to see how these privilege escalation exploits work. Well, uh, 
For everybody else, it's a good reminder to make sure that your Apple systems are updated. Again, this affects everything, Mac OS, iOS, uh, TV OS, and uh, yes, of course, Vision OS. Well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening. If you could do me a favor, well, uh, leave a review with your favorite podcast platform if it has reviews available. If you're not subscribed yet, uh, please subscribe. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.